Welcome back to the CNC Podcast. I'm Justin Yomont. And I'm Tommy Terrio. And before we even get into Card of the Week, we're happy to announce that we are sponsored for the month of November by Cards 2-Pack. And so I have a little message from our sponsor. If you're a sports card collector and wanting to get the best bang for your buck in breaks, then you're going to want to give Cards 2-Pack a follow on Instagram and join in on the Thursday night sports breaks that they put together. So it's not just baseball. So if you're collecting, let's say you're a bigger basketball or football fan than baseball, he has basketball and football team. It's not just baseball. They're always seeming to pull crazy, amazing cards, and you can check for you, yourself on some of the top polls that they've made or posted on Instagram when you go and follow them. And so uh, the one-stop trading card shop is called, again, Cards 2-Pack. So Cards 2-Pack. And they sell their spots on eBay. So the spots in the break, they're on eBay. So then you can go and bid on them if you're wanting, again, wanting bang for your buck. It's easier because you can easily you can bid on them and get them for cheaper or just buy them straight up. And so, again, to help you guys out, this is their profile on Instagram, Cards 2-Pack. Make sure to check them out. And make sure to buy into the breaks. Again, big thank you to Cards to Pack for sponsoring CNT. Now, Tommy, why don't you take it away with Card of the Week? So today, we're not doing Card of the Week, but I think that this warrants it. I think this definitely warrants it. Now, don't get don't don't worry. This is cased, but this is my new holy grail, and it's this. The glare is a little bad, and my ve- my my video is mirrored. We got problems going on all over. My apologies. Let me fix this so you can truly appreciate this. Mariano Rivera saves six thirty eight. So this is a game used ball signed by Rivera. There's also stickers on there. Don't worry. It's been authenticated. Don't worry about any of that stuff. Mm -hmm. So Rivera is the greatest closer of all time. I don't, I think I could get away with that statement without a single person on earth hating me. Well, if you can't get away with that statement, you're not the one, the one in the wrong. They are. Fair. So some, a little story about that ball specifically, that ball is a record breaking ball for Rivera. When uh, July 11th, 2012 or 13, somebody can go fact check me, whatever. He threw his 638th save, as it says on the ball, which was the ball that got him the most, the most 30 save seasons in history, breaking Trevor Hoffman's record, which I think is a very interesting statistic. I'll keep saying this baseball is the best sport for coming up with the most random statistics. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's just so many things. Jose Siri um, during the World Series, if you caught that during that broadcast, he's the first player. What did Joe Buck say? It was first player to debut in September, get an RBI in the World Series. Such an obscure thing, but I mean, love a baseball for it. But yeah, mm-hmm. Rivera's Joe Buck's an obscure broadcast. Well, we're at it. Uh, I don't think I'll go that far, but keep telling yourself that, Justin. Keep telling it's yourself not that. Good. It's not good. Obscure is not obscure is not bad. I don't mean it's just it's just something that you like you wouldn't commonly think about. I know. Like he's not a broadcast like the way he says things is not how you would commonly think it. You know, that's what uh, the point you're I was not wrong. At. You're not wrong. I that's won't that's the point I was getting I won't discredit you. Mm-hmm. That's a very cool ball. Um it is, even though it's not a card, it is still called card of the week. Like, I've used, you can maybe see it, probably not very great. There's a helmet up there that I've used in the past. Pretty sure you were on that episode. I've done plenty of stuff that's not cards. We still call it card of the week because the majority is cards. Yeah, I think we can get away with it for the most part. Yeah, especially because it's like once a month at most. Yeah, at the very most, but yeah. Mm -hmm. So... We, this week, we are doing, as you've probably seen from the title, an intro into card collecting. So, we both have two talking points that we did all on our own, and then one we both did. So, why don't you get started on the one we both did, because I have to pull a few things out. Okay, so for this one, we talked about products, some card products that we specifically recommend, especially for beginners. So, a little preface before we truly get into the topic of products. We've both been, we've both been doing this for a while, but... Card collecting has seen a 
big boom over the past year, year and a half due to everything that's going on right now. Mm-hmm. So we thought it'd be really important that people who really aren't as familiar with this topic get used to what we do. Mm-hmm. And I wanted to talk about just your baseline stuff. Tops, I think, I, I'd already talked about it. We talked about favorite products a couple weeks ago, but Tops is just your baseline. This is what gets you your foot in the door. And I think that's just such an important thing just to start out with. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to take your vote. It's not only Tops. So um, I did, I do have a few boxes. I like to keep them. Um, Don Russ is also another good one. They're not licensed, so they don't have the logo and designs on the box here as well. It's very good. I don't have, I've not, I have, shockingly, I haven't opened the Tops Blaster this year, so I don't have one. I have like a Hobby Box one, but I didn't want to pull that out because it's a little too big. So Don Russ is also another good one. Um, So the products I truly love are the Panini Elite Extra Edition. However, that's not really low end. Like that's not, it's not something beginners would probably get. And Tops Chrome is like, it's, again, it's a little bit more up there. I do have a blast of that. Like, you could do it as a beginner, but you probably stick with Tops and Don Russ. Um, another one that, um, a little more closer for beginners is Bowman. If you're all the top prospects, if you're big in prospects like I am, Bowman is great. Um, another one that's good, bang for your buck, um, is Allen and Ginter. I mean, they have good good boxes that are pretty that are relatively cheap. Mm-hmm. Um, I will say probably if you are just getting into cards and you want to actually open a product, not go to a card store and just buy singles, I would get the most recent recent tops or Don Russ one. I would lean toward tops because they drop more often. Don Russ drops once a year, 2021, 2022. Tops is special. They do top series one. Top Series 2 and Tops Update Series, I would just get the re- most newest one, which right now is Tops 2021 Update Series that just dropped. Um, has Jared Kelnick, Logan Gilbert rookies, Yorman Mercedes, all the rookies who debuted who um, during the season are in it, except for Wanda Franco, who will be in Tops 2021 Series 1. That's an interesting thing. I, I think you mean it's meant series, uh, 2022, but either way, I think it's interesting yeah. that they didn't include uh, Franco in it. I think that's kind of odd to me, but because right, they want to mass produce tops update series. So, um, little little hit card history is Ronald Acuna and Juan Soto were in 2018 tops update, and that was it. They were in series one or two, and tops update is printed far less than series one and two, and they wanted to capitalize on Juan de Franco, so they put it off, meaning. Hard like money wise, Wonder Franco tops rookies aren't going to be as valuable as Ronald Acuna ones are. Even if Wonder's better, there's just going to be more of them out there than there are Acuna ones. Yeah, makes sense. Which is why they, they can market it better. He's even up for being the number one card. So each year they do like a poll for number one. He's going to be card number one. Last year was Tatis. He's up for it in this one. Yeah. So I'll get into my first, my, my first one that I did solely. And I did, uh, I did grading. So that was one of my ones. And I think that this is an important thing to understand because I mean, having cards is awesome, but like having the, like the sealed and learning, uh, like the true quality of them and having that understood by experts for the most part, there's some miscommunications. We're, we're, we, we don't need to discuss that. That's not, that's not this episode. Maybe a but, little one. Yeah. So things are graded on a one to 10 scale with also just, eh, there is like, there's authentic. That's another graded system, but on a one to 10 scale where one is the lowest quality and 10 is pristine. That's perfect. You also see nine and a half, eight and a half, and sometimes seven and a half, depending on the company. So well, kind of cut in just a little bit. Yeah. Um, PSA is just whole numbers, Beckett. Everything else pretty much does the halves. Yeah, PSA is unique in that. Mm-hmm. that I also think that. that you can get a 0.5. I've never seen one, like, even pictured, but I think it's possible. Yeah. if you, As a beginner, don't try to get a 0.5. <laughs> don't mess up your card enough to try to get a 0.5. It's as expensive as PSA 10s, probably, because, like, it's, there's not going to be very many of them. It'd be very unique. I'll put it that way. 
Yeah. But yeah, so you're looking at, so if you're just looking at home and you're like, dang, PSA is charging so much, which they are, don't get me wrong, PSA, I'm calling you out, your prices are way too steep. Everybody else will back me up on this, but that's not, that's not the point. The point is, is that you're looking for a couple specific things. Obviously, any obvious markings on the card are going to degrade it massively. You also want to look for the creases in the corners, as well as other um, markings. So I pulled this one out just because it's not graded, but you can see like it's crease here. I'm not going to get this graded, just I don't like Luis Severino. Mm -hmm. But like you can see just those little things there. Like you're going to want to look both at the corners of the card, the obvious markings of the card, and um, the cut of the card. That's another thing that you know that you'll notice is sometimes it's cut in unevenly. Yeah, that's the cuts are usually on a little bit older cards, not as much as newer cards. Yeah, Tops has done a Tops and pretty much all the other companies have done a lot better on quality mm -hmm. control, shall we say? Panini, Panini's a little rough. I just I recently a shoddy. a. Uh, pin, panini prism pack um our uh, cello and there's there was surface issues before i even opened the pack that's unfortunate mm -hmm. yeah and okay. sometimes you'll like that will happen and then you if you grade it, it's not going to grade well yeah it's just how it goes yep that's just it is what it is mm -hmm. there's also um some thing that you didn't mention is you can send it so there's like some companies you can send it who will give their best guess on what the grade will be that's only going to cost more money though yeah it's not I, I i wouldn't personally recommend it if 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 you want to do that more power to you but that's not my advice mm -hmm. um do you have anything else or for i'm, I'm good okay well i just want to do one more thing i just want to say the companies that i would submit to and why so one, PSA, obviously, I want to say it's the best one, but it's the most well-known one. Beckett, again, not the most well-known, but in my opinion, the best. SGC has been getting up there. I would consider sending to them. I think their slabs are pretty cool. And then HGA is a newer one that's actually holding value. However, I would send to it, but only PC cards, because they, like, different style their designs on the slabs. So, like, let's say, hold on. I'm bringing in Nick Magidal again. It's just the card closest to me. Like, if I submitted this to HGA, which I wouldn't, I could get, like, the color of the tr of the X. That color would be the slap. And so, it wouldn't really hold as much value, but it would be cool looking. Yeah. So, what companies would you submit to? So, I would go at, I mean, I think the three you listed to begin with are perfect. I don't... I'm not as big on HGA. I feel like the, I believe they're the ones with the cool colored designs and all that. If I'm, if I'm thinking of the correct, correct yeah. one, I hadn't done research in them because I don't, I don't, I don't buy into them as much. I think that they're capitalizing on, they have a cool looking card. Yeah. Or a cool I mean, looking then, again, slab. That's what I said. Yeah. That's why I said I would only submit like, I have a Chris Bryant Inception out of 99 that's like all purple. I, I would submit that and have the thing be purple. Only PC cards that, I wouldn't consider um, selling or trading. Like, it's definitely not the best bang for your buck. It's just, yeah. it's a cool slap. Yeah, exactly. And it's just what it is. Yep. And it, that is what it capitalizes. It has a cool, different colored slab design that will get you interested, which is exactly what it did with me. And that's why, I think that's why it's holding value, is because the slab matches the color of the card. And I think people like that, and it's visually pleasing, and which is why people are investing in it. Yeah. So my I mean, first... Oh, sorry. I mean, as a beginner, like, if you're not looking for, like, the perfect quality of grading, like, if you're not looking, like, because, like I, like I said before, PSA and Beckett. Kill me with these prices, but geez. Um, but yeah, the... P um, but yeah, HGA, SGC, the lo the companies that are a little bit lower and a little bit cheaper are still like their like their reputation is going up. Well, I'm I'm going to come out and say I think that if you're just a beginner and you really want, really want to get some good cards, I would I would take the risk and invest in HGA because the cool slab. So I think they will hold their value and they have the cheapest setting point for one that has solid value right now, and so it's the cheapest for you. And it could skyrocket. And so 
I could get a lot of hate if this backfires, but I would invest in HGA. I, I'm hoping to send in a few cards by the end of the year. Yeah. So um, I, I could be completely wrong. It could completely fall off in value, but I think the slams look really cool. And I, I would invest because it's, it's the cheapest right now. Yeah, it is, definitely. So my first solo one was the online card community. I'm going to be focusing in on the Instagram part because that's where I am. So I've been doing um, cards on Instagram for, I think it's, we've been, I've been doing CNT for two, so I think it's been three years. Um, it's really fun. I, the only real problem is some people will take it too far and scam you, which always sucks. I've only been scammed, I think, once or twice. Really sucks. They're just losing cards, losing the value. It really, it really does suck. But I also, I only really trade, so I don't really get in much of the selling aspect at all, and only buying a little bit. So I did, I did phone a friend on this one. I have a friend, um, Dylan, the owner and creator of Cards and Coins 14. He's been on the podcast before. He's been doing it since 2014. So I'm going, I asked him a few questions. And here's what he had to say about the card community. So I really got it better understanding from just than what I know. So I asked, um, what's your favorite part about the online community? He said that his favorite part is that all the people in it. And he's met countless people and has become great friends with a lot of new people. And so his favorite part is just connecting with people. Next question was, what's one thing you change about it? And this this shocked me. I thought he had something. He said, I don't have any complaints about IG card community. Wouldn't change a thing, which completely surprised me. Yeah. I mean, maybe get, I mean, for me, maybe just get rid of some scammers. But I mean, like you said, like you've been doing this for a while and there really isn't much there. So, yeah. Um. Uh, he actually kind of comes to that with question three, which was, what's the worst part of the community? Where he said, the only, the one thing that is the worst part of the community is that the just would be having to get scammed. It's a rough feeling, and I wouldn't want anyone to feel that feeling to quote him, which I agree. Um, 100% getting scams is one of the worst feelings. Um, question four is what I asked this one for all, my, all the new card folks watching this is what advice would you give someone who just got into the community? And he, so his answer was one piece of advice I give to someone new in the community would have to be don't worry about what other people's collections look like just focus on your collection and buy and trade what makes you happy and what you like and what you want to have in your collection which i 100 percent agree with i'll be honest there's a lot of accounts that have a bunch of cards i felt a little discharged at how good someone's collection is compared to mine but just no focus on that i agree with that i don't do that nearly as much as i did three years ago yeah, and I think the other thing to keep in mind is if you have the um, PC of some random player that almost no one has heard of from 1937, if you're if you're collecting every the card of every guy, of uh, uh, the every card of a guy from 1937, like it's fine. Like you do you. Like mm -hmm. we like we do this. Like we do this both for passion. We're not money collectors. There's a lot of people out there who are money collectors and just do it stuff for the value. If you want, like, if you want to jo jo go that go down that route, I will fully endorse you. I will do deals with you and everything else. Or you go the other way. You go a lot more of that feeling, you got a lot more of that sentimental. We talked about that in another episode too. Mm -hmm. Sentimental versus monumental. Where I was a big part on my PC is all sentimental. The rest, I kind of, I want to make a profit on. Yeah. Still, I get sentimental. Like, I'll trade for a card that I will plan on flipping and it gets you. There's no interest for, like, the first two months. I'll get so attached to it that I'll, I don't want to trade it. And then I'll start a PC of that player. Yeah, it's okay. It's okay. I do that a little too often. Like, if you ever go to my card account, my PC is quite big. Yeah, my PC is much more restrained than this guy. Yeah, my yeah. So I asked one I, last. I can question. control myself. Okay, okay. Um, sorry, I, I'll, you I'll, I'll I don't need PC Devi Garcia because in Road to the Show and like LMB the Show nineteen or twenty aren't, came up with. Aren't him. you the guy that hates Juan Juan Soto because of the show? Can you really criticize me? 
I cannot. Can you really criticize? I don't me? hate Juan Soto. I just don't like the Soto shuffle. No, I also I do like David Garcia out of it. He actually, I mean, he played kind of disappointingly, but it is what it is. Yeah. Uh, we're getting off topic. I asked one last question, which was on a scale of one to ten. How would you rate the online college community? Dylan said that he rates it a ten out of ten. It's an amazing experience and has shaped me into the person he is today. Is what he said. I personally would rank it a nine point five out of ten. That point five is gone because people can be really annoying, overvalued cards. Just talk, just not want to do a deal and be rude about it. And the scammers takes out a point five. Uh, what would you? I know you only just got there, Tommy, but how, so far, how would you rate it? So, before I give my rating, I want to give my, my also my thoughts on a different community because I've also joined another community outside of it, which is um, Reddit r slash baseball cards. So another shout out there, but um, they're very helpful in they have a they, there's another one it's called literally sports card tracker. Like they like you can leave positive negative reviews. That's one thing I will say that's a like. De that degrades Instagram a little bit for me is like there's nothing like there's no place to combat compile like who's a scammer like who's proven to be a scammer and who's well like the it's not full issue there's multiple accounts who have scammer reports that you can submit to and they have them all posted and there's multiple accounts that you can go to yeah but I feel like I mean there isn't one central place which I think I mean isn't great but it is what it is just so just something to keep in mind like look out for that kind of thing if you're like you want to cross reference with some other with some other places and just say, hey, is this guy legit? Mm -hmm. Um, all right, you haven't given your rating rating yet. Sorry, I would probably give it a nine and a half. Probably, I, I would agree with that. I mean, uh -huh. there's a couple blots. I think it's really hard when you're trying to get a deal done and then they just stop talking. Yeah, yeah. I've That's already run into that twice. I'm not gonna name any names, mm -hmm. but I like speaking it's of naming names though. Um. Quick little plug for both of us. My card account is at CNT underscore cards. Tommy's is, you want to share? I'm, yeah, I'm at uh, Tom Tom T cards, all lowercase T O M T O M T cards. So, yeah, go follow us there if you ever want to make a deal with any card of the week you see that aren't PC. Yeah. A little, little shameless plug. Also, one bit of advice for the online community um, I would make a legit post as soon as you can. And every time you make a deal, have them comment on it. The sooner you build that up to, like 50 100 comments the easier it will be to do deals and you'll have proof that there's no chance that you are a scammer yeah i like it mm -hmm. so for all tommy does his next solo one i want to make sure that you all, all hit the subscribe button follow us on instagram and tiktok follow us everywhere subscribe to youtube follow it everywhere we're posting content every day in the off season and every day in the regular season so make sure to follow and subscribe yep so this one's this one's an interesting one to me. I don't have much to say on it, but it's searching for value. A lot of people getting into it, they're like, how like, so I think this card is cool, but what does it actually mean? Like, what am I actually looking for? Let me make sure I have my thing up because I hadn't pulled something up beforehand. Yep, I still got it up here. So I'm gonna go over to a company that's really, really helpful and when it comes to this, and that's eBay. So Lu Luis Severino was on my mind. I had the card out just randomly. It's not even intentional, but it is what it is. So the biggest thing that you're going to want to look for is down here. You're going to want to look for sold items because that way you can understand what people have bought these cards for. You can also be more specific than this. I just looked up Luis Severino auto, but if you want to look and say, hey, I have this card as well. I have one of the other out of 10 of this card okay, great, I could put this up for 40 bucks and I know it would get bought. Like, I know I could reasonably put this out there for 40 bucks. Mm -hmm. So, I it mean- is great. It, I'll, 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 just, I'll jump in a little bit. I have a spreadsheet that have the estimated value. I go on eBay, see the, the last three sold, combine them and divide them and put it in. Very easy. Yep, av just average it out. Um, Another one is- PSA also has them. Unfortunately, it's mo it's just graded here. I'm going to pull it up one second for you guys so you can see it. But you can see that uh, auction prices. So I just pulled up Mickey Mantle, 1957 Mantle. Just cool card. I don't, this is just, it is what it is. But 
Good Yankee style, Yankee style, apparently. No, uh, I was also doing research for my grandpa. He has one of these cards. Quick shout out. Oh. Um, I was just kidding. But yeah, so you can look and see what other, like, this is another just great, um, reputable site just to look at as well. Those are the two. Also, I- if, you look, if you look down, there was a PSA 1. Just reverting back to the rating scale. We'll see if we can get, I didn't see a 0. 0.5, Justin. Hate to break it to you. Yeah, because PSA doesn't do the halves. That, oh, that'd, right. be right. that'd be better. That'd be better. Well, yeah. Okay, I've never seen one. So I'll look, I'll look I into that. You're giving your, well, get, well, you're giving your bit. I'll look into it. Okay, I, I've been looking forward for this one, and it's kind of silly, but storage. Storage is huge, and I'm huge on storage and cards. I honestly, I like bins and containers almost just as much as cards, because that's what I put cards in. I'm going to start out by showing my travel case, so if I'm going to a card store, or uh, going to a card, anything that I need to take cards. Um, I actually just made this with this bin. I'm going to have to move my mic to show it. This this bin I'll have to move over that has most of the team stickers on it. As you see, there's Manors, Cubs, Giants, Rockies, Reds. There's even a CNT one on top with the all those. And then on the back, there's some more. And then on the bottom, I put my least four favorite teams. The Astros, Yankees, Cardinals, and Dodgers. And then on the sides, because I do collect football and basketball, I have a rated rookie football sticker. And a prism basketball sticker. Yeah. Um. So, pro, um, card storage is one of, like I said, one of my favorite things of the hobby. I use all sorts of things. Um, another thing I like to use a lot is binders. I have a lot of them. I think I have, uh, I have six. So this one, this one, I wasn't gonna show you guys this until I finished. I'm collecting the set of 2021 Bowman. So this is what I'm. Oh, oh no! I accidentally muted Justin. No, oh no! Technical difficulties. My apologies. That's all my fault. Was Try- I getting a little too excited about my binders? Yeah, a little, a little bit there, but that was unintentional. Oh, I promise. Oh, so it's a really cool one. I found out at a thrift store. One top. It's like my favorite binder design, but not my favorite binder. I have this insert binder. It's just blue. Has all my inserts in it. Nice. I'm gonna have four other ones. Um. They're all that's mostly PC and then old cards that are left in those four. Um, I actually have like a crate under my desk that holds them. Like I use a whole bunch of things. I use old shoe boxes to hold all my base. I have two bins down there in the brown little uh display thing that you can't see because it's at the bottom. That's two huge things of baseball cards filled. Uh like I said, I'm I'm a big container guy. I always like going to the container store. They always have little like baseball, um, baseball um protectors. They have baseball um cases sometimes. It's awesome. Um, I really like contain containers. Like I've said, storage for cards is always important. You always want to make sure you have something good. I also use these, um, not for baseball cards, but for um, these are always good. I use one for my number cards. I think. Anything's great. Um, always having a nice container is always good. Storage is very key if you want to pres- preserve the value of cards, assuming they're always in sleeves and cases, and then in a good protecting container. Yep, no matter no matter whether it's base or the highest end of cards, you're going to want to have some form of storage. Mm-hmm. By the way, I just looked into it, couldn't find anything 0.5, unfortunately. Okay, it might not exist, but theoretically... If it, if it does... It if it does, reach out to us somewhere, somehow reach out to us. Find one of us on Instagram, email us, whatever. We want yeah. to see a picture of your 0. 0.5. Yeah. I Theoretically, it does exist. It might not, but theoretically, it, it could. Now this is going to be the lore of, uh, lore of C&T from now on. I feel, like, I feel like I have seen one, but I, I can't put it. I'm just going to check one place where I might have seen it. The, uh. Okay, so we got we got our Nick Madrigal reference in. I think we're good. I didn't mention him last episode. Ah, yes, the streak is broken. Free at last, free at last. Uh, Thank God Almighty, we are free at last. Ah, uh, I can't. It wasn't there. Um, the giveaway. 
Tell them about the giveaway again. Because okay. we still haven't hit 100. You get another chance. Yes. So we got two different Blake Taylor cards. A Blake Taylor rookie as well as a Blake Taylor rookie auto. Well, not, not a rookie auto. That This one's just a this one's a Sterling from back when he was a member of the Pirates. My apologies. So we also have I, – I have some of these stickers. So we also have some of these. These stickers are very, very limited. Like extremely limited. You're not gonna find very many. So I think I think we're down to less than five. Yeah. So if you want them, come get them. Make sure to subscribe. Uh, we're holding the giveaway over on the Parts and Talk Instagram. All you have to do, um, well, follow, like follow. the post. Um, we and then um, if you want to, if you also repost it, there's another. That's another re-entry there. Mm-hmm. Please enter as many times as you want. Like if you do it each day by day, each new day you post on your story is a day, or is an entry. So enter as much as you want. Like get in, get, win. Cap this. of cap of one per day. We're not giving. We're not giving a guy just who has twenty minutes. We're not letting you repost it a hundred times. It's yeah, not. It's get one per day. Yeah. I'm really trying to find this 0. 0.5. I can't. So I'll, I'll finish the wrap up. Thanks again for watching. Um, we hope this helps for those who are new and have joined over the past year and a half. We, we hope this helps. And if you, if you aren't new, hopefully you enjoyed me gawking over all my storage and binders. Yeah. Reach. And, and then if you have any other questions, reach out to either of us or, at, or to the CNT Instagram. Mm-hmm. Um, we can help any, with any other questions that you have. There's, just make sure. Another thing is going back to the online community for a minute. We're d- just a fun group of people for the most. Like, obviously, scammers are going to muddy the community. But keep in mind that the majority of the people in, in the community want to help you, want to make deals. Mm-hmm. Also, if you're ever in a deal and you want our opinions again, at CNT Cards, at Tom Tom T Cards, shoot us a message. Yeah, just let us know. Also, if you heard about any, if you're not watching on YouTube and you heard about anything you want to see, head over to the YouTube. It's all there. I can't promise it's all going to be posted to CNT at any time. Card of the week should be, but I'll be honest, I've been forgetting as of late. So it's always on YouTube. It's always on YouTube if you want to see my awesome travel case. I'll show it off one more time. So and with that, see, I think that's head our over cue to, to head YouTube out. For sure. I think that's our cue to head out. Thank you guys for listening this week. Thank you all for watching. We'll see you next week.